Good day, ladies and gents. Welcome to this short video. We're just going to have a look at some approximate analyses, especially of trusses. And this is to understand global building behavior, though, to help you understand bracing and general design and load rundowns. It's very useful if you can convert beams into trusses and trusses into beam just to understand how loads are passed through a structure. So Let's start off with a simple truss, and here we've got a 12 meter spanning truss with a uh, 10 kilonewton per meter uniformly distributed load on it, and let's assume all angles are 70, 78 uh, equal leg angles. So now, if we wanted to do an approximate analysis, think of this truss as a beam, with the top flange as the top cord, the bottom flange as the bottom cord, and then the holes are just where the web is, but then the web, which normally carries the shear, is simply the verticals and diagonals. So this analogy will generally work, provided though that shear deformations and shear distortions aren't large. As the holes get bigger, shear deformations increase and the analogy becomes less accurate. But let's do the quick calc. So let's treat this as a simply supported beam. So our maximum moment at mid spans omega L squared over 8, which is 180 kilonewton meters. And then the maximum, uh, well, the reaction uh, at each side, the left and right side, is just the total load divided by 2. So that's 60 kilonewtons on the left and right side. Now, if we take the depth of the truss as being 1 meter and force times distance, at the mid span we will have a bending moment of 180 kilonewton meters, depth 1 meters times force in top cord. So we can determine the approximate maximum force is in the um, top cord as 180 kilonewtons, um, just dividing the bending moment by the depth of the truss. So and then the diagonals and the verticals carry the shear forces while the top and bottom cords carry the bending as I was saying. So based on the shear force diagram we can calculate the force in the final diagonal. So what you find there is that there is a, a, a 60 kilonewton reaction on the end and then if we break up that UDL into a bunch of point loads the, the end point loads about five and then we convert this to being at a diagonal so multiply it by square root of two we end up with 70 roughly 78 kilonewtons. So very simple calcs but what about deflections? Let's see how rough and ready we can get with our deflections. Now let's think of this as a beam once again and all the material that uh, is resisting bendings in the top and bottom flange. So if our, the area of an angle um, is 1060 millimeters squared, we can use the parallel axis theorem and get the equivalent Ix of the beam as if it was an angle at the top and angle at the bottom. So it's area times distance from neutral axis. Neutral axis is in the middle, so that's 1000 divided by 2, and the Ix of the angle. And if we run through that, what we find out this is a summation of the uh, AY squared term and then the IX of the actual angle. And what you'll see here is that the IX is actually very low, so we can pretty much take the AY squared term and so we get to an equivalent second moment of area. And so let's now calculate the deflection of the beam. A simply supported beam is the deflection as shown here. Now if we plug in all the numbers we end up with a deflection of about 25-26 millimeters. But let's compare these to a detailed analysis. So let's say we ran a Procon analysis of it. What we find is that the maximum force top cord, give or take the same of 180 kilonewtons. Force and diagonals, Eh, more or less the same, and then deflection at mid-span, also approximately the same. So you can see we had a reasonable approximation, and that gave us a quite quick rough and ready calc. So we could t uh, turn our truss into a beam, get some forces, and analyze it this way. Just as I said, the deflection calculation using beam analogy ignores the contribution of vertical and diagonal members. There will be a discrepancy as um, shear deformations become larger. But we can use this truss to beam and beam to truss analogy just to start understanding structures and understanding load rundowns. For instance, here this can help us now 
to understand bigger buildings such as warehouses and multi-story buildings. We're going to see a warehouse here. See how the, the roof ma um, matches to some extent the shape of the bending moment diagram. You can optimize structures in this way. And also, if you're having a look at the diagram on the right, you can see the truss is much deeper in the middle and soft, uh, sh shallower at the side. This is also just to do with practicalities. And the approximate bending moment diagram the fixed reaction will shift upwards or downwards depending on how stiff the column are. Col columns are. Very slender columns will result in this to be virtually simply supported or pinned, and very heavy columns will result this in to be uh, this to be virtually fixed fixed, but normally it's it's somewhere in between. But also now coming back to our understanding, portal frames of their members can be modified to match the shape of bending moment diagrams to optimize it. And I'll show you some optimizations tall buildings and then various other systems so for instance here's some tapered beams once again optimized to sh match the shape of the bending moment diagram to get some efficiency out of the system you can take a very complicated structure like this um, one shown here and ultimately this is more or less a cantilever with a bending moment diagram as shown you would need to do lots of detailed analyses on this sort of structure, but at least this can give you an estimate of uh, the type of forces you'd experience for preliminary design. So you can start seeing what sort of foundations and basement size and the likes you would need to get the forces to work and then carry out more and more refined analyses as you go. But that should give yeah, a quick rough and ready way to get sort of preliminary forces. And Having a look at the diagrams here, these show different analyses of different multi-story buildings. This was some work I did previously, and we were optimizing multi-story buildings, and they only had lateral loads, so sideways loads applied to them, and the beam and column sizes could be anything. The, the structures were kept symmetrical, but they could be anything, and kept optimizing and optimizing these, and, and these funny shapes kept emerging, and initially I thought it was a mistake, but then suddenly I realized that the optimization process, it was finding bracing paths. It was actually creating cross bracing systems within the structure as that was an optimal layout. And uh, yeah, so the structures effectively braced themselves. And so you can even uh, apply those principles to bigger structures, more complicated structures. You can see conceptual designs of the likes of the shard and the other buildings up top right. And even you can do massive um, space trusses to keep uh, buildings uh, you know, structurally sound as on the bottom right. So you can see how these two diagrams have a lot in common, trying to provide lateral stability to structures. So that gives a quick overview of uh, trust to beam analyses, and hopefully you can use that to then start analyzing structures.